Welcome into Fact Finder Investigates. I'm Dylan Domain. We have a new Fact Finder warning. After receiving several reports, Derby Police now warning of a new scam. Fact Finder reporter Rachel Hallam spoke with the police department about the text message scam and how to protect yourself from becoming a victim. Kansas Turnpike Authority confirmed Friday Kansas residents may be receiving fraudulent text messages. After several reports, Derby Police have confirmed the exact same scam. We did receive a lot of different reports from citizens. Uh, as far as we know, no one's out any money. However, they want to make people aware, and we've had even officers' family members receiving uh, these messages, so we wanted to make sure the public was aware as well. This latest scam is known as smishing, and it looks just like this. You'll receive a text message from someone posing as the KTA requesting a payment for unpaid tolls. So should you experience something like this, Derby Police has some advice. Our recommendation is always to go and do research into wherever they're saying that you owe. I would research and contact the Kansas Turnpike Authority to make sure if you had those tolls or not. Captain Karenza Schiffel says she sees there are certain people who become victims to these scams. It tends to be more people that are looking for a human connection. And so as they have that more human connection through someone, they're more willing to give information. She adds this is something that can destroy many people's lives. It's painful to see people lose their life savings, lose their livelihoods over scams. Now the KTA and Derby Police advise don't click on any of the links and if you do receive a text like what you just saw, you're encouraged to file a complaint with the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center. You can find that link on our website or the 12 News app. An investigation underway after stolen human remains from Wichita turned up in Pennsylvania. A Wichita man is among several people charged by the DOJ in the nationwide trafficking of stolen remains. Angelo Pereira pled guilty earlier this month to federal charges in connection to a ring of buying and selling human remains. Officials are saying the ring stretches from Arkansas to Pennsylvania to Harvard Medical School and now Wichita. According to court documents, between 2018 and 2022, Pereira and a Pennsylvania man caused stolen human remains to be transported from Wichita to Montgomery, Pennsylvania. It's unclear how those remains were obtained. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Pennsylvania is handling that case. Multiple people, including Pereira, have pled guilty, but none have been sentenced. And a fact finder alerts this one for Nissan drivers. The company has issued a do not drive warning for certain models due to an airbag malfunction. The warning covers certain model year 2002 to 2006 Nissan Sentra, 2002 to 2004 Nissan Pathfinder, and 2002 to 2003 Infiniti QX4. This recall goes back to a previous recall in 2020, but they say all have not been fixed with more than 84,000 vehicles on the road with the issue. Worldwide, at least 35 people have been killed by Takata airbags. And a fact finder alert, so you don't fall for this, the Federal Trade Commission saying beware of calls or emails from someone claiming to be Best Buy or from its Geek Squad support team. A new report found that Best Buy is the most impersonated company by scammers and there have been more than 52,000 complaints. Consumers reported losses totaling about $15 million due to Best Buy and Geek Squad related scams just last year. Amazon and PayPal are the second and third most impersonated companies by scammers. Unearthing more to the story. For the last several days, an archaeological dig in Labette County, field north of Cherryville, looking for new clues to a more than 150 year old mystery of a serial killing family. It's a true crime story that continues to attract international interest. As Factsbinder reporter Sean Logging reported last fall, the landowner has enlisted the help of KU's Anthropology Department and the Kansas Geological Survey to search for the homestead of the Bloody Benders. Sean heading back out there as the dig begins. On a windswept Kansas day, the tools are prepared and the search begins. This is the, the dream come true. This is why I bought the land. Pull beyond where you want to miss. This field school led by Dr. Lauren Norman with the KU Department of Anthropology with six students and volunteers. They've descended on the land once home to the Bloody Benders along the historic Osage Trail just north of Cherryvale. The story isn't over. The history is done, but it's not over. It's not finished. And that's 
really cemented in this project because I mean there's no house here but look how many people have been gathered just for digging an empty field. In the early 1870s a family of four the parents son John and most famous of them all daughter Kate remembered for their propensity to kill and rob weary travelers welcoming them into their home before hitting them over the head slitting their throats and dumping their bodies into the cellar to be buried here later. To do this work here is a way of honoring uh, I think um, those people, uh, the people that, that uh, lost their lives. After the bloody vendors were discovered, the four fled and vanished, but tourists soon descended and quickly cleared away what remained. This is a really cool site because of the story, but also because we have such great interest. So we have a lot of people working on genealogy, the history, kind of their own family's connection. Adding more to the story, this has been a long time coming for the land's current owner, Bob Miller, who bought it four years ago. We know what happened, but we don't know where it happened, and find out what the ground has been hiding for 150 years. After extensive prep work, the time has come to start the archaeological dig. To most people, it's just junk. You know, to us, it's, it's really important data slowly peeling back dirt to discover bits of history to uncover evidence of the home stable outhouse and this larger mystery a lot of archaeology is about the artifacts but at least half of what we know comes from where we find the artifacts and so recording their context keeping good records is all part of it after carefully cataloging everything that's been found here the next step will come over the next few months as everything is analyzed to see how it fits into the bloody benders story it's real exciting because you wonder when you find like a rivet or a square nail was this part of the cabin uh, was it a ho horse bridle that had belonged to one of the victims beyond adding to the story of the benders this field school is a rare teaching opportunity for dr norman and her students archaeology really is learned in the field students like dylan allen who was out here last summer conducting ground surveying i haven't gotten the opportun opportunity to do much digging and so like being able to put everything that i've learned in school to the test it's it's very satisfying as the bloody bender story is far from complete this work is carefully trying to unearth the truth this isn't going to be the end of the story for sure this is just the beginning stages of it long process but hopefully a very fulfilling and rewarding one because it's unknown what pieces of this story remain buried in this land north of cherryvale in labette county sean logging 12 news that's good hey we got it now, after the field school finishes, those items recovered will be taken back to the lab, cleaned, and then studied. Dr. Norman hopes to have some preliminary findings this fall. Additional surveying is planned for this summer, which could lead to future excavation.